What is up guys, Wrestling Premiere is here. When you look back at this feud, it really should have been a launching pad to John Morrison's main event run. From a 2010 perspective, it seemed like he was pegged for a monstrous 2011. The man had finally started connecting in a huge way with the crowd with his athletic parkour background, along with the entertaining matches he had at the time. Morrison to me at the time was somewhat larger than life. I was interested in what he was doing, and again, the WWE title didn't seem too far away at all. As the weeks went by, it was looking like he was going to get his hands on it. And Sheamus, on the other hand, he had finally started to get comfortable on Raw. He was pushed a little... No, no, no. A lot too fast. But fans were starting to react now to whatever he was doing, and I personally saw him as a big deal. And together, these two guys did some very good matches, especially that ladder match. One of the most overlooked matches from PG era WWE. I'll get into that later, but for now, let's talk about where both men were on the totem pole. Sheamus, he was fresh off a of WWE title reign, the second I should know. I don't really like his run because it felt as if he was on borrowed time, and whatever he was doing, the opponent was always more over than him and generating more of a reaction. Then again, this is John Cena and Randy Orton we're talking about. John Morrison, on the other hand, Mid Carter. He was featured on Raw every week for the most part, but didn't have much of an impact. Now, for context, this feud initially didn't feature just these two. It also included Santino. On the October 25, 2010 episode of Raw, Sheamus randomly tore into Santino, calling him an absolute disgrace and an embarrassment. Sheamus wasn't just angry with Santino's appearance, he was also frustrated with how he performed at bragging rights. Toby Keith, the guest host of the night, booked that match a while later, and about that, he was bullied, beaten within an inch of his life, but then... John Morrison ran in and asked for the ref to call it off. Santino though was okay and John was asking Sheamus like what are you trying to prove? And that broke kick that Sheamus was eagerly looking to hit wasn't to be and instead Santino stole the damn match. Even he couldn't believe what had transpired and this had also caused Sheamus to not get angry. The Celtic Warrior didn't see things from others perspective. You know, he held himself responsible for the loss saying, I beat myself, and so he was out here to challenge Santino Morella to a rematch. He came out and talked about how he went trick-or-treating like Sheamus, but everyone thought he was a ghost. There was also a stomach problem in the way because he had eaten too much candy from Halloween, and Sheamus was close to bursting out. Nonetheless, Santino had a replacement, Vladimir Kozlov. He this time around, Sheamus didn't mess up. Kozlov did whoop his ass, but he quickly wrapped it up with a bro kick. Mr. Halloween Candy was finally caught and was desperately trying to avoid the situation, and the amount of times he tried to bribe him... I lost count. Man was even saying he was gonna make it rain at the club I was willing to hand him that cash. He even attempted to write a check, but Sheamus caught him, kicked him in the abdomen before attempting the Celtic cross. Suddenly John Morrison runs in, kicks him twice, and I can't help but think this was like one of those GTA side missions where you help somebody. Like that's what it felt like to me. But the following week though, featured one of the most memorable segments from 2010 in my opinion. Like there's a bunch of people that remember this very well. So Ra was in Manchester, England. Santino and Kozlov felt that it was the perfect time to have a tea party. This was because the duo wanted to blend in, and not only that, but Santino wanted to make the peace. Santino's like, we have green tea, ginger tea, and the crowd's laughing it up. Sheamus was certainly close to when he felt that Santino was misunderstood. Why? Because he compared him to a kid in his childhood. But anyways, he asked if Sheamus takes his tea dark or milky. Santino quickly apologized, but accidentally poked fun, and he claimed that Sheamus was angry because he was exposed to gamma rays. The hell? Then he began saying, ghosts aren't this white, and Santino was having so much fun that he forgot why Sheamus hates him. So Vladimir had to remind him, Kozlov chant intensifies, all oh, the commentary was in shock. Santino starting to piss himself at this point in fear and mistakenly dropped tea on Sheamus. He got all angry and an impromptu match was announced between Santino, Morella, and Sheamus. About that, Santino was a baby. He had too much fear to actually wrestle until the raw GM comes in. Morella's threatened with suspension so he was all fired up. Sheamus easily knocked him down, gave him a beating before walking into a low blow and watching on mute. You'd think he was the heel. He had a little too much fun because of this and took a bro kick. Once again, John Morrison came to the rescue. Sheamus never addressed this at all and for Morrison, he was tired of the bullying. Everywhere he goes, Sheamus is bullying someone and he wanted to put a stop to it. His response came in the form of a bro kick before challenging Morrison to a match at Survivor Series. Soon enough, the match was confirmed for the pay-per-view. Now, Sheamus didn't really take Morrison seriously. To him, it was about jealousy. Morrison had never won the WWE title before in his career. Their match at Survivor Series was pretty good. Morrison initially caught Sheamus off guard with his power core offense. However, the Celtic Warrior used the environment to his advantage and began grinding the challenger. John failed to break through at this point with no answers to Sheamus' no nonsense offense. And things were looking bad for Morrison, but after avoiding the broke kick, it was all good from here. Well, for the most part, of course, because Sheamus was clearly still in the match. He got frustrated with Morrison's resiliency and went after his knee, and he executed all kinds of moves on the knee. Such as this, this looked pretty damn unique. Nonetheless, he refused to give up and from out of nowhere won the match with a random knee. I wouldn't outright call this a gem, but if you were going to watch the Survivor Series, this match will probably end up being one of your favorites on the show. The ending itself caught me off guard because before watching it for the video, I expected a way different finish. Like perhaps Sheamus winning or Morrison barely scraping a victory via roll-up. Despite this, the feud still continued. 
Both men qualify for the King of the Ring tournament. They went through their opponents to set up a clash in the final. The only thing to mention is that the King of the Ring hadn't occurred in four years. KFA watched Sheamus had the advantage because he competed once, unlike Morrison, you know, he had to turn him by. Sheamus called Morrison's victory one of the greatest of his career, but promised that it won't happen again. He even called him Slim Pickings. Johnny responded saying Sheamus' size doesn't matter, said that the fact that he looked like Powder didn't matter, and damn, they were insulting Sheamus every single week. Also, I forgot about her. The way this one went, it was way different. So Morrison not only went through two men, but Alberto Del Rio shot a car door on his arm, and Sheamus smelled blood. He immediately went after it, put 100% of his focus towards the arm, and it was nearly in critical condition at this point. He wasn't smart about it as well, but still though, he was doing excellent counters, and at one point had the match won, but Sheamus forced the brick. All he had to do was target at the arm, and he's back in. It was as simple as that, but it didn't stop Morrison from hitting the Pele kick. The victory was in sight, but the Celtic Warrior put his knees up, blocking the Starship pain. Sheamus gets up, hits the bro kick before connecting with the Celtic Cross to become King of the Ring. Not a bad match at all. Lost technically clean, protecting Morrison, and it made him look pretty damn good with the whole disadvantage. He fought through it and almost won the matchup. With the King of the Ring victory, it led to Sheamus transforming into the usual heel king character. Me personally, I don't really remember much from this iteration of Sheamus. It's pretty forgettable. But anyways, Sheamus is expected was going to hold some sort of celebration. John Morrison, though, crashed the party. He poked fun at the new king before walking into the ring, and Sheamus had enough of the jokes and claimed that Morrison's jealous of his accomplishments. John praised him before claiming that he's the better man regardless of the fact that it's one to one now. He laughed it off before saying Johnny's never wearing this crown. Sheamus even demanded that Morrison bow down to his king, and he responded saying he'll never bow down, and clearly Sheamus took offense. So he slapped him and shouted for him to do it. This turns into a brawl. Well, actually, at once I had a fight with Morrison taking him to the cleaners. In light of this, a match was booked for the Slammies episode of Raw. This one was intensely heated right from the beginning. The ref couldn't take control and ease things, and so it was a double disqualification. The trash made their presence felt by booking a number one contenders match between Sheamus and John Morrison for TLC. Oh, and it's a ladder match. Sheamus didn't walk away upon hearing this, instead continuing the attack and even launching John Morrison right onto a ladder. Now about this match in particular, it was a star-making performance for John Morrison. Me personally, I look at his career like this, before TLC 2010 and afterwards. The match, in my opinion, should have been the launching pad for something special. It wasn't no tire at all ladder match, it was pretty damn unique. So the story's basic. Performances, whole other level. Sheamus was the big mean bully who was more brutal rather than exciting, and Morrison was stealing the show. It was the underdog fighting an uphill battle, and in the process executed some cool ass moves such as the corkscrew. Sheamus, though, didn't remain down for long and punished John severely for it. And this moment itself caused huge damage to Morrison. Immediately, Sheamus intelligently targeted the leg. You know, if you can't walk, you certainly can't climb. It was as simple as that. Morrison sold it extremely well, and to me, that enhanced this matchup. Sheamus was out there kicking the leg as if he was a striker or something, using the ladder itself, and again, unique spot. This is what makes this match stand out in my opinion. There were some very standout moments. Morrison adapted to the situation. With his leg hurting, he still found the wherewithal to do some extraordinary things. And then there's this spot, of course. Even though it seemed like Sheamus was down and out, he managed to recover, only to walk into an awesome rebound kick from Morrison. He then climbs up, retrieves the contract to win it, and man, that was an awesome match. Bravo to both men. And up to this point, it was the best match of their careers. For Morrison, it looked like a true superhero, fighting through the pain, adversity, and doing it in style. Remarkable stuff, and if you've never watched this match before, you have to. The selling, the action, everything was awesome, and I even go as far as to say it was one of the best damn ladder matches. The match itself was somewhat overdone at this point, yet both men found a way to get creative and take a different approach to it, and in doing so, put on one of the best matches from 2010. I it can't be understated what the win did to Morrison's career, as he was seen in a very different light and felt like a bigger star afterwards. Following this, he ended up challenging for the WWE Championship, whereas Sheamus ended the whole King Sheamus thing. They would have a few more matches together, but the feud was basically over here. Like, if I were to talk about the matches following this, it'd just be length padding the video. There's just not much to say other than the fact that Morrison beat his ass twice. Alright, what'd you guys think of this feud? As I said personally, it had some very good matches. I liked how Sheamus was this big bully and Morrison came to the rescue of Santino and increased his star power in my opinion. It made him look like a much bigger star. And as I said, it was looking like he was destined for great things in 2011, but hey, it wasn't to be. All right, that's it for this video. Make sure you hit the bro kick on the like button and perhaps the starship pin on the subscribe button. Peace, I'm out.